Empress Elizabeth is one of the most famous royal women in European history. Famed for her great beauty, she was also a skillful diplomat. Elizabeth was Austria's longest serving empress, even though she had a hard time with her own court. Nevertheless, she had a special relationship with the Hungarian people and eventually her influence united the crown of Austria and Hungary as an equal dual monarchy. A lot of common knowledge about Elizabeth, who was also called Sissy, stems from contemporary movies. In my part of the world, almost everyone knows the trilogy Sissy with Romy Schneider staring as the young empress. For me, it is a must watch around Christmas time and I have already done so. The movies paint a certain picture of Elizabeth and when comparing them to historical records, one can find a whole lot of artistical freedom in the movies. Let's find out about Elizabeth's true story and where the movies might have taken the fairy tale route. Elizabeth was born as the fourth child of Duke Maximilian Joseph in Bavaria and Princess Ludovica of Bavaria on December 24, 1837. Duke Maximilian was a bit eccentric, just like many members of the House of Wittelsbach. He was more progressive in his ideals than most European aristocrats of his time, which rubbed off on Elizabeth's beliefs. Elizabeth's childhood was more less affair than many other noble children's. She and her siblings were free to ride out in the Bavarian countryside and move around freely around their residence, Personhofen. This liberal upbringing made Elizabeth prefer a more private and liberal lifestyle where she had some independence to dispose freely of her time. In the movie Sissy, the family life of Elizabeth is viewed as extraordinarily idyllic. Looking back, that was not entirely the case. Sissy's parents led an unhappy marriage for the most part. Her mother Ludovica was in love with the future Portuguese Emperor Don Miguel when she had to substitute for her deceased sister Maximiliane, who was promised to Maximilian in Bavaria. Eventually, it was a political marriage for both, and neither one was genuinely happy. Nevertheless, the marriage produced ten children and Ludovica was a dedicated mother. The movie also shows the children roaming around freely without any responsibilities, when in reality Elizabeth and her siblings had to attend many classes where they received an extensive education. The siblings had a good relationship with each other, but Elizabeth was especially close to her older sister Helena. In 1853, the sisters and their mother were invited to the court of Ludovica's sister Sophie, mother of Emperor Franz Joseph. She had failed to find a suitable match among the European royalty, so she turned to her own family. Initially, Helena was ought to become engaged to the Emperor, but Helena did not catch his intention. Instead, Franz Josef fell head over heels for the 15-year-old Elizabeth. He insisted to his mother that he would only propose to Elizabeth, not Helena. He even announced he would never marry anyone if it wasn't for Sisney. Sophie was deeply unhappy about her son's decision, but she eventually had to give in. In the movie, it is portrayed as if Helena was deeply upset with the Emperor's decision, but it is delivered that she wasn't too fond of the conservative Franz Josef herself, so the sisters are not said to have a dispute over him. The time leading up to the marriage was said to be quite contrasting. While Franz Josef was seen to be madly in love and overcome with joy, Elizabeth was reserved, nervous, and often found crying. This was probably a result of being away from her home, being shoved into the strict Austrian court with all its rules, as well as the reportedly harsh demeanor of a soon-to-be mother-in-law. This is also shown in the movies, but here Sissy is portrayed to be just as smitten with her fiancé, which likely wasn't quite the case. She probably was flattered by the Emperor's wing but she was not interested in becoming queen and living a life full of rules. Moreover, Elizabeth was a more free spirit, while Franz Joseph was conservative and complied with a strict Austrian court life. Eventually, on the 24th of April 1854, Franz Joseph and Elizabeth got married in a lavish ceremony in Vienna. But reality set in quite quickly for Elizabeth. The Austrian court was intensely strict, 
with rules and etiquette inspired by the Spanish etiquette. Sissy soon grew wary of the rules. Besides, the relationship with her mother-in-law deteriorated even further as she refused to involve Elizabeth in governmental affairs. Their relationship is said to have worsened when Elizabeth and Franz Joseph had their first child, Sophie Friederike, in 1855, and Archduchess Sophie supposedly refused Elizabeth to take care of her own child, with the same thing happening to the next daughter, Archduchess Gisela, born in 1856. The portrayal in the movie paints the same picture of the evil mother-in-law, but historians are not sure if that was actually the case. Some even say that Archduchess Sophie encouraged Elizabeth to take care of her own children. Following Gisela's birth, the pressure increased even further on Elizabeth to produce a male heir. It is reported that a cruel pamphlet was anonymously left in her private chambers, which suggested the role of a queen or empress was only to bear sons, not to have a political opinion. Without bearing a male heir, she was useless for the empire. It was widely believed that Sophie was the source, but nothing has been proven. In 1857, tragedy struck when Elizabeth accompanied the Emperor to Hungary for the first time. Although Elizabeth formed a deep connection with the informal Hungarian people, it was also the site of great disaster. Both her daughters fell ill and the Archduchess Sophie died, only two years old. Following Sophie's death, Elizabeth retreated from Gisela as well. She began the obsessive beauty and physical regimens that she would grow famous for. This included fasting, rigorous exercise, an elaborate routine for her ankle length hair and stiff, tightly laced corsets. During the long hours required to take care of her beauty, Elizabeth cancelled all other appointments for the day and used the procedures to learn several languages, study literature and poetry. In 1858, Elizabeth finally gave birth to the long-desired heir, the Crown Prince Rudolf. With his birth, she earned a larger influence at court, which she mostly used to speak on behalf of her beloved Hungarians. Elizabeth grew close to Hungarian diplomat Count Gyula Andrasi. Their relationship became a close friendship and was rumored to be a love affair, so much so that when Elizabeth had a fourth child in 1868, Rumors swirled that Andrasi was the father. Just like in the movies, Elizabeth was truly passionate about Hungary and its people and she went to great lengths to support their needs. Around 1860, Elizabeth had to withdraw from politics when her fragile health worsened. This came in somewhat handy for her as she could withdraw from court life for some time. While recovering in the womb, she usually improved soon but her symptoms often came back when she returned to the Viennese court. It was around this time that Elizabeth had disputed with her husband and mother-in-law over their wish for her to be more present and have another child, which Elizabeth did not want. Consequently, her marriage with Franz Josef, already distant, became even more so. Just as in the movies, Franz Josef was torn between pleasing his dominant mother and catering to his sensitive, beloved wife. In 1867, Elizabeth gave in by returning to her marriage, by which she increased her influence to push for the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867, which created a dual monarchy as equals between Hungary and Austria. Elizabeth and Franz Joseph became King and Queen of Hungary, and Elizabeth's friend Andrasi became the Prime Minister. In 1868, Elizabeth gave birth to her daughter Valerie, who became her mother's favorite child and was almost smothered with affection. With her new official role as queen, Elizabeth used every opportunity to spend time in Hungary, where she liked to take her daughter Valerie with her. When her mother-in-law Sophie died in 1872, Elizabeth still kept away from court, choosing instead to travel across Europe. She dearly loved the Hungarian people as they loved her, and she gained a reputation for a fondness of common people over nobles. Elizabeth spent the next years traveling Europe, especially Madeira and Corfu, where she stayed long term. But the Empress was hit with yet another tragedy in 1889, when her son Rudolf died in a suicide pact with his mistress Mary Vetsera. This left Franz Joseph's brother Karl Ludwig as the heir. 
Rudolf had been a sensitive character like his mother, his military upbringing deeply traumatized him. The last years of the century were filled with loss for Elizabeth, as her father had died in 1888, her sister Helena and her friend Andrasi died in 1890, and her mother in 1892. When growing older, Sissy wanted no pictures to be taken of her anymore, and her desire for privacy grew. Over the years, she reconnected with Franz Joseph, and the two cultivated a friendship. While Elizabeth was traveling extensively, she and her husband corresponded often. It is even said that Elizabeth encouraged Franz Joseph liaison with Katharina Schrad to keep him company. In 1898, Elizabeth was traveling incognito in Geneva, Switzerland, when news of her visit leaked. On September 10th, she and a lady-in-waiting were walking to board a steamer when she was attacked by Italian anarchist Luigi Lucchini, whose intention was to kill any monarch. The wound was not evident at first, but Elizabeth collapsed soon after boarding, and it was discovered that Lucchini had stabbed her in the chest with a thin blade. The Empress died shortly after. Her body was returned to Vienna for a state funeral and she was buried in the Capuchin church. Her killer was apprehended, tried and convicted, but he eventually committed suicide in 1910 while in prison. Elizabeth's legacy carried on in several ways. Her widower, Franz Joseph, founded the Order of Elizabeth in her honor and many monuments and buildings in Austria and Hungary carry her name. In many movies, Elizabeth was portrayed as a fairy tale princess who was deeply in love with her husband. Nowadays, historians have uncovered Sissy's lifelong struggle with her role as queen. Her extensive traveling is often interpreted as running away from the strict court and as feeling restless. The modern portrayal of Sissy emphasizes her complex character and her often unhappy demeanor, which to me turns Queen Elizabeth from the untouchable queen into a relatable human being. And that just seems to be much closer to the real-life Elizabeth than the movie Sissy.